if within a three day or five day time period, if it falls below support, below 40K, that means we might see more downside, potential lower low. Hello everyone, Alessia Restani, who recently predicted correctly that Bitcoin pullback is imminent, is back again with his new Bitcoin analysis and price predictions. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Now, the first thing I want to mention here is that, as you may recall, a few weeks ago, as Bitcoin was reaching these elevated levels, just near 48,500, 49K, we warned of a potential pullback in the price. In fact, you may recall at this very moment, a lot of people were saying, oh, Bitcoin is definitely going to go to all-time highs. We said, no, wait for a pullback. In fact, here's a very short clip from that video. We'll come back. So I think given that Bitcoin has now reached these levels of resistance, I think it's quite probable and quite likely we're going to see some kind of pullback. I think a pullback of about 15 to 20% is entirely probable and reasonable to expect. All right, guys, welcome back. So as you heard in that video, as the price of Bitcoin was reaching these levels, we said, look, wait for a potential pullback of 15 to 20%. And look at this. You can see from these highs all the way to the lows, price of Bitcoin dropped by 21%. So within that 15 to 20% parameter, we were looking for a pullback or decline in the price of Bitcoin. By the way, guys, before we continue, I don't mention this often enough in my videos, but if you haven't already subscribed to our videos and to our channel, please go ahead and do so by clicking the subscribe button. Also enable notifications. Just click the bell icon so you can receive notifications whenever we post a brand new video. I would really appreciate this. Okay, now we can see that Bitcoin has come down to some important support levels here, just near 38K and the 100 daily moving average here, this orange line. And also very interestingly, we have a MACD positive crossover on the daily chart. As we can see here, the MACD indicator has given us a positive crossover right here, just recently, by the way, yesterday, it was confirmed, and below zero. You can see the MACD crossover signal occurred below zero, as you may recall from previous videos. I prefer when the MACD signal occurs as close as possible or below zero. Now, here's something important I need to mention here, that I do not use indicators like MACD or whatever on their own. So I see a lot of YouTubers and analysts all the time talking about indicators on the charts. Now, there's nothing wrong with using indicators. I use them too, but it's not a good idea to just use indicators on their own. So for example, I see a lot of YouTubers saying, oh, we have a MACD crossover signal and blah, blah, blah. Well, you need to also look at the general structure of the chart. Okay, so it's no good just saying, oh, you have a bullish signal or a bearish signal in the chart. No, you need to also combine this with the structure, the wave count on the chart. Why? Because Elliott waves give you context. For example, you can see we had a MACD crossover signal right here. True. Well, firstly, I don't particularly like MACD signals that occur too far above the zero line. I prefer them as close as possible to zero or below it. But importantly, also we have to look at the context from which that signal occurs. In which part of the wave count does the signal occur? Let me give an example. If a MACD crossover signal were to occur in a B wave, like you can see, here. As we know, B waves are usually bull traps. Okay, If the MACD crossover signal or any signal, any bullish signal, was to occur in a B wave, or let's say it occurred towards the end of a wave 5 or the end of a wave 3, you can see why that would be dangerous. Because if we just ignore, if we were to just ignore the wave count and the structure, the context of the actual chart, then what you're doing is you're ignoring risk. So the reason why we must look and pay attention to where we are in the wave count is because we want to know what the context is and also to reduce risk as much as possible. Because if a MACD crossover signal was to occur in a B wave or a wave five, essentially what happens next is then you get this massive decline and drop. And that of course exposes you to a lot of risk. So structure and wave counts are very important when we look at the chart. And by the way, for the wave count on the chart of Bitcoin, make sure you go ahead and watch my most recent member video and also the next member video, which I'm gonna publish on Sunday. And if you're not a member, you can join the link in the description. Now we have a MACD crossover here, as I mentioned. No, you also have to look at what kind of trend do we have? Do we have an uptrend or a downtrend? So for example, here's Bitcoin in a downtrend like we had in 2022, a few years ago. So I would never use a MACD crossover signal in a downward trend. Actually, if I did use it, I would have to use strong risk management. But you can see why. Because if you applied the MACD crossover signal in a downtrend, for example, notice that in 2022, you had a couple of MACD crossovers here in the summer of that year. And you can see when that crossover signal occurred, Guess what? 
That was a false signal, and price dropped immediately. Then you had another one, again, also in the summer of that year, in 2022, that occurred about here, okay? And that also ended up being a false signal. You can see a while later, the price of Bitcoin then collapsed. So again, I do not use, I do not like using MACD crossover signals in a downward trend when the path of least resistance to the downside, because the risk is really high of potential false signals and the price just continuing to go lower and lower. On the other hand, if we apply it to an uptrend, an upward trending environment like Bitcoin was a few years ago, for example, 2021 and also late 2020, you can see, for example, we had uh, in this example here, we had a nice MACD crossover signal here. And we can see that ended up being a nice positive signal and price of Bitcoin continued to push higher. Same thing happened right over here in February 2021. And that coincided with a nice uh, bottom here in the price of Bitcoin. And then it continued to push higher. So you can see when the price is trending up, the probability of a bullish signal on the MACD to indicate a continuation of the upward trend is much higher. Here's another example for in the year 2020. Again, we can see that when the price is already in uptrend, uh, again, these signals work a lot better, like it did over here. And you can see there, there it was, and also here, okay? And also here in September, October. We can see that pretty much uh, soon afterwards, the price continued to push higher and continue the upward trend. I'll show you one more example. This is in the year 2017, as we recall that major uptrend of that year. And again, we can see that when the when the price is in an uptrend, generally crossover signals just work so much better, as we can see here. Okay. Now, of course, there are going to be false signals too. I'm not saying in an uptrend, you're never going to get false signals. That is no risk. Of course, there's always risk. All I'm saying is the probability of a MACD signal resulting in a continuation of the uptrend is much higher in an uptrend than it is in a downtrend. And as we can see here, these all resulted pretty much in continuations, continuation of the uptrend. Okay, let's get back to our chart of Bitcoin as we stand today. Now, we can see that the MACD crossover signal essentially triggered yesterday. There it is, the blue line going above the red line there. And that occurred on yesterday's bar, on the Monday bar. Now, you're probably thinking, well, so what? What does it matter? Well, you see, guys, I apply another rule to the MACD crossover signal, which many people do not even know about. You see, there's another rule which we apply, and that's called the three-day rule or three-bar rule. What that means is after the MACD crossover signal occurs, we then wait three bars Whatever the time frame you're using, you would wait three bars, or in this case, because it's a daily chart, we would wait for three days. So we apply what's called a three-day rule or three-bar rule, okay? And what that means is we wait for three more bars, or three days in this case, just to make sure that we're not seeing a false signal. Why? Because as I'm sure you're aware, sometimes you get false signals. Even in an uptrend, you get false signals. So what I prefer to do is wait for three days just to make sure we're not dealing with a false signal in case the price collapses, okay? Now, I'm not saying the price is gonna collapse. All I'm saying is I prefer to wait for that three day, the three bar period, just to avoid any potential false signals. By the way, let me just say this, that some analysts prefer to use what's called a five day rule, okay? Which is even more conservative, even more strict. But if you don't wanna use a five day rule, you could apply what's called a three day rule. Okay, so there's nothing wrong five day or three day, but I personally prefer to wait that three day period just to avoid the potential false signal. What does that mean? It means that if, let's say, we count from yesterday, so yesterday's bar uh, was Monday, that's when the MACD signal was triggered and confirmed. So today, as I'm making this video, it's Tuesday. So I would wait three days from the time of the crossover. What does that mean? It means I would wait. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I would wait until the end of Thursday or the beginning of Friday just to make sure that we know where the price is by the end of Thursday or beginning of Friday to avoid any potential false signals. Because if something happens within that three-day period, like let's say price suddenly collapses below support, then we would know in that three-day time period, okay, potentially. Of course, sometimes it takes more than that. All I'm saying is that sometimes after a MACD crossover signal, within three days or sometimes within five days, typically if we see a false signal, or some kind of collapse or reversal, it happens within that three-day or five-day time window, okay? So, in other words, by waiting for three days, in other words, waiting from, again, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, until Friday, we might be able to eliminate a potential false signal just in case price were to collapse. So, for example, 
if by Thursday, by the end of Thursday, or let's say Friday morning, let's say price was to drop below support, and support could be, for example, near 40K. Okay, so let's say, as an example, I'm not saying it's going to happen this way, but let's say as an example, price by Friday, within the three-day time period, were to suddenly drop down below 40K support. If that happens, that would mean we're dealing with a potential false signal on the MACD, and that would increase downside risk if price was to drop down below support, let's say 40K as an example, by Friday, within the three-day time period. By the way, remember, you don't have to use a three-day time period, you can use a five-day time period. Now, I know what some of you are probably thinking, well, Alessio, what if you wait three days and then the price just keeps going higher and then you miss, miss out on the potential move? True. But as I'm sure you're aware, guys, whenever you're doing any kind of analysis, your most important rule is risk management, okay? You have to offset risk Against what? Against reward, potential reward. So it is true, you might miss out on some potential reward if you wait for the three-day. My apologies, I'm trying to write this down on the on the chart. So it is true, you might potentially miss out on potential reward if the price keeps pushing higher within that three-day time period. All I'm saying is the potential reward you might miss out on is offset by the risk that you might face if price was to suddenly drop down below support. So I would say it's a matter of personality as well. So it depends how much of a risk taker you might potentially be, how much risk tolerance you have. I personally, being very cautious, my personality tends to lean towards the cautious side. I don't mind waiting three days just potentially to limit and reduce risk. But that might be different for you, okay? So everybody's different. If you don't want to wait three days or five days, that's fine. You can do it any way you like. All I'm saying is there's nothing wrong just to minimize risk a bit more by waiting for that three-day time period, just to wait and see what happens to the price within three days after a MACD crossover signal, okay? That's my general rule. You can take it or you can leave it. So that's really what I have here. I want to see what happens to the price of Bitcoin by Friday, within the three-day time period after a MACD crossover occurs. If price can survive that three-day time period and stay above, if it can stay above support, let's say, for example, above 40K as an example, that's a good sign. It's a sign that potentially may have a bottom on the price of Bitcoin. Okay. Now, if it cannot survive that, and if within a three-day or five-day time period, if it falls below support, below 40K, that means we might see more downside, potential lower low, or a potential further drop to lower levels. Okay, So that's why I'm saying it might be a good idea to wait for three days just to wait and see what happens to the price within that three-day time period after MACD crossover signal, just to eliminate potential false signals. So in other words, if within the three-day time period, Bitcoin has managed to survive and stay above support like 40K, that actually might be a very positive sign that likely Bitcoin has bottomed after this recent decline. By the way, there's one more important rule that I use in combination with the MACD. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Rastani. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.